Kanoi te mihi kia koutou. Uh, kia ora, good morning everybody. A very warm welcome uh, to all of you. Uh, firstly, I just want to speak directly to the New Zealand people and I want to say thank you to all of you for your patience and your understanding and the wait for this government to be formed over the last 20 days. I think it is a real credit to New Zealanders that we now handle the MMP process with such calmness and maturity. I also want to thank Chris Hipkins and the outgoing caretaker government for all of their assistance during this transition. And also on behalf of the country, I want to thank the public service for so calmly keeping on during this period. The new government is looking forward to working with you and to delivering the government's programme and to getting things done for Kiwis. I said on election night that we would be a government that would deliver for every New Zealander, regardless of who we are, where we are and whatever our life circumstances are. How we do that has been at the very core of our negotiations. The negotiation process has been diligent, it's been focused and it's been purposeful because our aim has simply been not to, to form a government but to form a strong and stable government that gets things done for Kiwis. On election night, New Zealanders voted for change and they put their trust in us and in return we trust New Zealanders. We believe in this country, we are ambitious for it and we know that with the right leadership, the right policies and the right direction, Together, New Zealanders can make this an even better country. I'm here with ACT Leader David Seymour and also New Zealand First Leader Winston Peters, and I want to publicly thank both of them for the way in which our negotiations were conducted so professionally uh, and with goodwill and with good faith on all sides. What we have achieved together, I think, is historic because it is, in fact, the very first time in New Zealand's MMP history that we have had a three-party coalition government with all parties represented in Cabinet. ACT and New Zealand First have agreed to support the major elements of National's extensive policy programme. Both coalition documents provide for the two parties to support the commitments that we made in our 100-day plan, our 100-point economic plan and our tax and our fiscal plans, with some adjustments to some of those policies. And the National and ACT Coalition Agreement provides the that the government will progress a range of ACT initiatives and that these will in fact be supported by New Zealand First. Equally, the National and New Zealand First Coalition Agreement outlines a range of New Zealand First priorities which will be supported by ACT. And that result is a true three-party coalition government with a strong parliamentary majority and a comprehensive policy programme for the next three years that will get New Zealand back on track. And we are now ready to go to work for New Zealand and for all New Zealanders. Our government will rebuild the economy to ease the cost of living and to deliver tax relief and to increase the prosperity of all New Zealanders. Our government will restore law and order and personal responsibility so that Kiwis are safer in their own communities. And our government will deliver better public services so they are more efficient, more effective and more responsive to the Kiwis who need them. And our government will strengthen democracy. We now have a very comprehensive and ambitious programme to deliver these goals, so let me just touch on a couple of points for you. Overwhelmingly, New Zealanders' primary concern is the high cost of living, and a change of government alone doesn't make life easier. However, the things that we do will make the difference. One of those is tax relief, because the coalition parties believe that people should be rewarded for their effort. Hard-working Kiwis should keep more of what they earn, and our government will deliver on that promise. The coalition parties have adopted ACT's policy to speed up the rate in which interest deductibility for rental properties is restored, and the tax package will be continued to be funded through a combination of spending reprioritisation and additional revenue measures. However, as part of National's proposed agreement, uh, National's agreement with New Zealand First, the proposed foreign buyer tax will no longer go ahead. The government will treat taxpayers' money with respect and we will be disciplined in our spending. And to help deliver modern and reliable infrastructure, we will establish a national infrastructure agency to improve funding, procurement and delivery. We will begin work on 13 new roads of national significance and four major public transport upgrades. And the government will progress the regional infrastructure fund proposed by New Zealand First with $1.2 billion in capital funding for regional infrastructure. And the government will adopt X policy to establish a new agency to remove red tape and assess the quality of new and existing regulation. And that agency will be funded by disestablishing the Productivity Commission. The Reserve Bank Act will be amended to focus monetary policy on price stability. Now, New Zealanders also expect our government to better deliver against countering crime and delivering justice. 
and legislation to bring in Nationals backing police tackling, tackling gangs policy will be introduced in the first 100 days. The parties have agreed uh, with ACT to rewrite the Arms Act to provide for greater protection of public safety and to simplify regulation and regulatory requirements. And we have agreed with New Zealand First to train no fewer than 500 new frontline police over the next two years. And all of us have agreed on revisiting the Sentencing Act to ensure that there are appropriate consequences for offenders. Now, part of treating taxpayers' money with respect is ensuring that New Zealanders get better value from government spending. And we should all feel confident that the money is being well spent and that, for example, kids are getting a good education at schools and that the health system is effective and responsive. We'll ensure that by setting targets like shorter wait times in hospitals and wait lists uh, and holding ourselves accountable for delivering them. And whether you are old or young, regardless of your ethnicity, if you live in central Auckland or the deeper south, our government is going to deliver for you. The government's commitment to lifting educational attainment means that every class will be taught an hour of maths, reading and writing each and every day. And the coalition parties agree that beyond 2025, the first year of fees free for tertiary study will in fact be replaced by offering the final year of study fees free. The parties accept ACT's policy to reintroduce partnership schools and to allow state schools to become partnership schools and accept New Zealand First's policy to refocus the school curriculum on academic achievement and teaching the basics, not pure ideology. There are so many more things that I could mention, but I wanted to give you a flavour of how our policy agreements come to life. They will be released publicly in full and everyone, of course, is free to read them for themselves. Let me turn to the structure of the government uh, because the basis, as I have said, is that we will be a three-party coalition government. I will be the Prime Minister, Mr Peters will be Deputy Prime Minister for the first half of the term and Mr Seymour will be for the second half. In addition, Mr Peters will be Minister for Foreign Affairs and Mr Seymour will be Minister for Regulation. Our Cabinet will have 20 Ministers, 14 from National and three each from ACT and New Zealand First. There will be eight Ministers outside of Cabinet, five from National, two from ACT and one from New Zealand First. ACT and New Zealand First will each have one Parliamentary Under Secretary. And I have to say, I think it's a very strong team. We have first-time ministers, and I want to congratulate each and every person on their appointment to the ministry. The full ministerial list is available, so I won't go through it now, but suffice to say that I'm incredibly pleased to confirm that Nicola Willis will be Minister of Finance and Minister for Public Service. Brooke Van Belden will be Minister for Workplace Relations and Safety, and Shane Jones will be Minister for Regional Development. And National will be nominating Jerry Brownlee as Parliament Speaker. So let me now hand over to uh, Winston Peters to say a few words uh, before I wrap up, and then I'll pass on to David Seymour to say a few words, and then we will move to the table to do our signing of our documents. Winston.